Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on this Wednesday, the 7th of October. Um, just to say at the beginning that unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, we will not be able to have the service at 11 o'clock at St. Mary's today. Um, so I will be contacting those who normally come. But if you are planning to come and don't normally attend, then uh, just to let you know that unfortunately this, there won't be a service at 11 today. But as we come together, let us pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised, out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have found a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings that you should seek them out. You have made them little lower than the angels, and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the work of your hands, and put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the path of the sea. O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray of one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our first psalm for this morning is Psalm 77. In the day of my trouble, I have sought the Lord. I cry aloud to God. I cry aloud to God and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble, I have sought the Lord. By night my hand is stretched out and does not tire. My soul refuses comfort. I think upon God and I groan. I ponder and my spirit faints. You will not let my eyelids close. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old. I remember the years long past. I commune with my heart in the night. My spirit searches for understanding. Will the Lord cast us off forever? Will he no more show us his favour? Has his loving mercy gone clean gone for ever? Has his promise come to an end for evermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he shut up his compassion in displeasure? And I said, my grief is this, that the right hand of the Most High has lost its strength. I will remember the work of, your, of the Lord, and call to mind your wonders of old time. <coughs> I will meditate on all your works and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who works wonders and declares your power among the peoples. With a mighty arm you redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you and were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out water. The skies thundered. Your arrows flashed on every side. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the ground. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea and your paths were in the great waters but your footsteps were not known. You led your people like sheep by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In the day of my trouble, I have sought the Lord. Our Old Testament reading is a continuation of the first book of Kings, chapter 22, verses 29 to 45. So the king of Israel and the king and king Jehoshaphat of Judah went out to Ramoth Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, 
I will disguise myself and go into battle, but you wear your robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. Now the king of Aram had commanded the thirty-two captains of his chariots, Fight with no one small or great, but only with the king of Israel. When the captains of the chariots saw Jehovah's fat, they said, It is surely the king of Israel. So they turned to fight against him. And Jehoshaphat cried out. When the captains of the chariots saw that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back from pursuing him. But a certain man drew his bow, and unknowingly struck the king of Israel between the scale armour and the breastplate. He, d he said to the driver of the chariot, Turn around and carry me out of battle, for I am wounded. The battle grew hot that day, and the king was propped up in a chariot facing the Ar um, Aramans, until at the evening he died. The blood from the wound had flowed into the bottle of the chariot. Then about sunset a shout went through the army, Every man to his city, and every man to his country. So the king died, and was brought to Samaria. They buried the king in Samaria. They washed the chariot by the pool of Samaria. The dogs licked up his blood, and the prostitutes washed themselves in it, according to the word of the Lord that he had spoken. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab, and all that he did, and the ivory house that he built, and all the cities that he built, are not written in the book of the uh, are they not written in the books of annals of the kings of Israel? So Ahab slept with his ancestors, and his son um, Ahazah succeeded him. Jehoshaphat's son Asa began to reign over Judah in the fourth year of King Ahab of Israel. Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 25 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Azba, as daughter of Shili. Uh, she, he walked in all the ways of his father Asher. He did not turn aside from it, doing what was right in the sight of the Lord. Yet the high places were not taken away, and the people still sacrificed and offered incense on the high places. Jehoshaphat also made peace with the king of Israel. Now the rest of the books of Jehoshaphat and his power that he showed, and how he waged war, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord whilst he may be found. Call upon him whilst he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, I return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless, but it will accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Our New Testament reading is a continuation of the book of Acts. Chapter 23, verses 12 to the end of the chapter. In the morning, the Jews joined in a conspiracy and bound themselves by an, uh, together by an oath neither to eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. There were more than forty who joined in this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and elders and said, We have strictly bound ourselves to an oath not to, to taste no food until we have killed Paul. Now then, you and the council must notify the tribune to bring him down to you on the pretext that you want to make a more thorough examination of his case. <coughs> And we are ready to do away with him before he arrives. Now the sons of Paul's sister heard about the ambush. So he went and gained entrance to the barracks and told Paul. Paul called to one of the centurions and said, Take this young man to the tribune, for he has something to report to him. So he took him, brought him to the tribune and said, The prisoner Paul called me and asked me to bring this young man to you. He has something to tell you. The tribune took him by the hand drew him aside privately and asked, What is it that you have to report to me? He answered, The Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul down to the council tomorrow, as though they are going to inquire more thoroughly into his case. But do not be persuaded by them, for more than forty of their men are lying in ambush for him. They have bound themselves by an oath 
neither to eat nor drink <coughs> until they have killed him. They are ready now and are waiting for your consent. So the tribune dismissed the young man, ordering him, Tell no one that you have, for have informed me of this. Then he summoned two of the centurions and said, Get ready to leave by nine o'clock towards uh, for tonight for Caesarea, with two hundred soldiers, seventy horsemen, and two hundred spearmen. Also provide mounts for Paul to ride, and take him safely to Felix the governor. He wrote a letter to this effect. Claudius Lysias to his excellency the governor Felix. Greetings. This man was seized by the Jews and was about to be killed by them. But when I learned that he was a Roman citizen, I came with the guard and rescued him. Since I wanted to know the charge by which he was accused, I have brought him to, your count to their council. I found that he was accused concerning questions of their law, but was charged with nothing deserving death or imprisonment. When I was informed that there would be a plot against the man, I sent him to you at once, ordering his accusers also to state before you what they had, had against him. So the soldiers, according to their instructions, took Paul and brought him during the night to Antipatris. The next day they let the horsemen go on with him. While they returned to the barracks, when, when they came to Caesarea and delivered the letter to the governor, they presented Paul also before him. On reading the letter, he asked what province, province he belonged to. And when he learned that he was from Cilicia, he said, I will give you a hearing when, you have, when your accusers arrive. Then he ordered the yet be kept under guard in Herod's headquarters. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to repair his way, and to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the day that lies ahead of us. We ask that you be with us in all that we do. Be with us in how we treat others and how we deal with them. Be with us in all our all our plans this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we pray for those who are being affected by the coronavirus. We pray for those who are in self-isolation for those who are shielding, for those who are in quarantine, for those in hospital, and those who have died. We pray for all who are awaiting test results, for those who are under extraneous lockdown measures, for those who are being held in isolation from their friends, from their families. We pray especially for our families who are far away from us, who we are worried about. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we ask that you send your peace upon this world, that you put an end to violence and an end to suffering. We pray for all who have been the victim of crime, for all who have been hurt or wounded by anything others have done to them. We pray for all who are in such desperate straits that they must turn to crime. We pray for the police, for the judiciary, for those who are attempting to seek truth. We pray for all who are in prison. We pray for the prison guards. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the benefits of Colnbrook and Datchet, for those who live and work here, <coughs> and for those who are seeking you. We pray for our schools, for the staff, for the pupils, and for the parents. We pray for all who are looking to gain knowledge and understanding and wisdom. Lord, send your Holy Spirit and gift wisdom to those who seek it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are struggling to make ends meet, for those who have been put on furlough, for those who are in, who have been made redundant, for those who are looking for work, for those who are in need of the food bank, we give thanks for the work of the food bank and the support that it gives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we pray for those who are sick in mind, body and spirit. We pray particularly for those who are suffering from mental health issues, those who are in the grips of addiction. We pray for Davy and for his recovery. For those who are being treated for, for cancer, we pray for Joe and for Megan. We pray for those who are awaiting diagnosis or have had their treatments delayed because of COVID. We pray for those who are in self-isolation before or after going to hospital. We pray for those reaching the end of their lives and those who recently lost their lives. We pray particularly for Jill and for Chris. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of stillness, we offer to God the thoughts and prayers of our innermost heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw yourself to us to yourself, and so that bring and so bring us at the last to your heavenly city, where we shall see you face to face, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. So let us pray of confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just a reminder that there will not be a service at 11 o'clock today at St Mary's, uh, but please do join me this evening at 5pm for evening prayer, and uh, we will have morning evening prayer for the rest of the week as normal, 
and we should also have uh, um, services on Sunday, and I'll talk about those as we get closer to the day. Until we can see each other again, God bless, stay safe, and have a very good day.